And I'm Rod Burks alongside Mr. Tom Silverstein of the Journal Sentinel. Happy New Year, by the way. Thank you, Rod. Uh, let, that. Yeah, yeah. You. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let's start talking about the Green Bay Packers. And you wrote a really good article after the Lions game about Aaron Rodgers. He was he said he was a little off um, and when he he missed a, he, he missed some receivers. His timing seemed it wasn't working. What did you, what did you take out of that? Well, it was it was a little bit shocking to see some of those misses. I mean, they were passes, timing passes where he's thrown behind some guys, threw over some guys. Um, through 55 passes, that surprised me a right. ton. I mean, that was a lot of passes to throw against Detroit on the road in mm -hmm. a dome. Mm -hmm. And they felt like they could beat them down the field, but it was almost like they were, you know, banging their heads against the wall, right. keep right. trying, 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 and it, and it never really worked. <laughs> I, it was a little shocking to see him miss throws like that. Now, you know, we heard um, over the last couple of days, LaFleur kind of put the onus on the wide receivers that, right. you know, they need to help him. They need to run through routes. But, you know, the throws like the one to Valdez Scantling over the middle was way behind him. There was right. another one to Tanyan was way behind him. So I think it's kind of, it's shared. I mean, we, right. we, Packers are not dealing with the greatest receiving core in the history of football. <laughs> right. I mean, it's not even close, but... Still, you know, you want your quarterback to make those guys look better. How difficult is it for the offense when, to, to try to win a football game when he's not playing up to Aaron Rodgers' standards? Because we've seen him light, light defenses up. Well, you know, and here's the crazy part about it is their defense holds teams to 20 points 20, or fewer right. almost every single game. So all they need to do is score 21 points to win. Right. And they struggle to do that if they could put together – a couple of good offensive games that could make a run in the playoffs. You know, I mean, I don't know if they'll hold, if they wind up playing New Orleans, I don't know if they can hold them to 20 points. Right. But you know they're going to be pretty good in the red zone, and, and they've gotten better at defending the run, and they're going to probably keep the team in the game. Then it's up to the offense. So, yeah, hot quarterback, you need that in the playoffs. I mean, we've seen Aaron Rodgers getting, get hot, so hopefully for the Packers' sake that he does get hot here for this playoff run. What, what's going on with MVS? I mean, it seemed like from training camp to now, these guys, they're not on the same page. Either he's running the wrong routes or it seemed like he's lost some confidence in his own self. Oh, total. His confidence is shot. And, uh, you know, they've tried to – work him in. I don't think he's a perfect fit for their offense. I think he's a big, tall receiver who runs vertical routes. That's what he does. He's sort of, I don't want to compare him to Randy Moss, but <laughs> right. when Randy Moss came out, he just ran by everybody, and, and MVS can do that. But this offense requires lots of crossing routes and, mm -hmm. you know, over routes, and, and he's just in a slump. And I'm surprised they stick with him at this point. I mean, I don't know why they did. They might as well give Ryan Grant a shot. If, you know, they're not confident in MVS, then they should, you know, try someone else. But I just think it's going to be hard in the playoffs to get a guy his confidence back. Well, what, do you, what about you talk about him and you on the flip side, you see someone like Alan Lazar who got cut in training camp. They kept Darius Shepard instead of him. Mm -hmm. he, they bring him back on the practice squad. They elevate him and he's just making plays. I mean, he <laughs> practically helped him out big time in, 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 against Detroit. Oh, yeah, made a huge catch right. down, down the seam. But he is a good number three, number four wide receiver. They need – a dynamic number two, wow. and that's pretty obvious. You know, mm -hmm. Devontae Adams is going to get double teamed every every week, and the other guys are going to get some single coverages. To get that double team off Devontae Adams, they got to get somebody making some big plays down the field, and they're not doing that. Uh, Lazard has been everything you could imagine, imagine. for right. an undrafted rookie. rookie right. You couldn't ask for much more. But there's a reason why a guy is undrafted. There's a reason why Valdez Scantling was taken in the sixth round and mm -hmm. Equinemius St. Brown or fifth and sixth. Right. Um, because their talent levels aren't as great as guys taking the first round. So, um, you know, Lazard is, is a nice player, and they have to, I think they're maximizing his talents. I think they're doing a really good job of that. Green Bay Packers playing at home for a playoff game. They get a week off. What are some of the deficiencies on this team that you see a couple of them? Do you like to pinpoint that going into the playoffs? Uh, I would say that, well, of course, consistency on offense, and that means uh, keeping drives alive. Third downs. Third downs, they've been really inconsistent, and I think they have to be more willing to take 
shorter shots, um, like the 95-yard drive they had against Detroit. Detroit. <clears throat> they're hitting six, seven, six. Third. The down and distance is always good. Right. Second and third, third right. and third, right. three. Um, you know, and and that really helps their offense. I think they got to do that. I think they got to stick with Aaron Jones. You know, right. he needs 20 to 25 carries. Keep Jamal Williams in there. Um, but they're deficient at tight end. Right. They don't wow. have a yeah. tight end that can stretch the field. And um, they had one in Cook, boy. They had one in Cook. They sure did. They sure did. And they might see a good. They'll see good tight ends all the way through the playoffs. Right. You know, I mean, think about, about it. it. Right. You know, maybe Seattle is is the lone exception, but San Francisco has Kittle, and yeah. New Orleans has Cook, Cook right. and uh, Minnesota has Kyle Rudolph, and right. you know, on and on. Philadelphia has uh, Zach Ertz. Ertz. So That's a good point. It's a lot of good tight ends. A lot of good tight ends, and the Packers. Don't have one. Do you, do you think the Packers defense will be able to, to to slow these guys down? Because that's been their that's been their problem all all season long is trying to slow down tight ends because they've been getting lit up on defense. Yeah. On well, they got two things going for them. One, the strength of their team is their pass rush. You always want pass rush. Pass rush. I'll take pass rush over anything else. And number two is they have corners. You know, mm-hmm. they have two pretty solid three really, uh, pretty solid corners. You go into any playoff game and you have three corners. That's you know, you're doing pretty well. So they have the ability to be a really good defense. Uh, they just, you know, they have to stop, continue to stop the run, you know, and get after the quarterback. It all comes down to getting after the quarterback. Last one for you. Has, has Kevin King showed you something this year? He's made some big interceptions. Has he, has he showed you something? I mean, he wasn't healthy the last couple of years. What has he showed you? Well, I think what we've learned, what we already knew, was that when he's healthy, he's a good player. When he's not healthy, he's, you know, half the player that that he normally is. He plays hard. He he gives you everything he's got, but he's got to. He's one of those guys that's got to be healthy to be effective. And he has been the last couple of weeks, and he's playing better. Mm-hmm. But anytime there's you know a, a groin pull or a hamstring pull or something like that, it it really affects his game. And so they got to keep him healthy every way they can. And they did that by sitting him out in the uh, I can't even remember was it Bears or Washington, yeah, one, one of those two yeah. games, Washington I think. I think yeah. to to try to get him healthy for the stretch run. And when he is, he's a pretty good corner. He's Tom Silverstein. I'm Rod Burks. I know he's got to go write one of his tremendous <laughs> columns. If you, even, if, if you don't get a chance to read his stuff, I'm one of those guys that still has the paper, and I read it every day, and I highlight Thank his stuff. You, you got to follow you. this guy. You're, he gets it done. All right, we're done. We're out. Happy New Year. <laughs>